Hi, have a look at this Microsoft Power Automate Community Forum thread. So here the user asking is flow to be triggered when status changes. So the status will change several times. I would like to have all the status trigger in one control in Power Apps, if possible, like a button or text box. Should I have a bunch of if statements or switch statements to accomplish this? Okay, so that means the user is looking for the looking for a trigger when a flow triggers when the status changes. But there are multiple status out there. I believe this is in SharePoint. It hasn't mentioned anything about uh, whether it's Dataverse or SharePoint. So I'm going to show here the scenario of SharePoint here. Uh, for Dataverse, you can specify actually the, the the trigger reference to column actually. Okay. So for this demo, what I did is I have a SharePoint disk called orders and under the orders, this is my status and I want to capture, you know, approval in progress or approval in completed. There are a couple of values here in that. It's a choice field, single select. At the same time, what I did is I created another column called last update status. Okay, so this is a technique I'm going to use here. So I created another column here. So the plan is whenever an item is created or modified with that specified status we want to capture the flow will trigger but in sharepoint connector if you're going to modify that again the connector doesn't know it's always a modified option then it's always trigger more than once so in this uh, i'll show you the show you the technique how to stop that more than once the trigger is yeah so that's the reason i introduced this last update status here Okay, and the values, it's the same option set values as here also, exactly the same here. Okay, right. So my list is called orders. So here is my flow and um, my trigger is called when an item is modified or created. As you can see here, I can't specify the specified column which is going to trigger. Okay, so for, the, for this reason, whenever the item is modified to that particular status, every time the flow is going to get triggered. So, but somehow we need to stop it, yeah? So for that, what I'll do is, first I'm going to say when an item is created or modified, then I'm capturing that value. Then the next step is I'm going to do an update status also here. So update item. Okay, the ID is coming from the trigger, that is that ID. The title is mandatory here, so we need to map it again. That is the title, there it is. And you can see here the last update status. It's the same as the status column, remember? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, enter a custom value and then look for the status value here, see that? From the trigger that's that's when i'm going to update all right that's done now still it's not going to sort out our issue here because whenever whenever i'm going to change the status to uh, I, approval completed or approval in progress i want to trigger uh, you know my flow but then suppose see this is an example so i create an order called order 190 and approval in progress my flow flow will trigger Another um, uh, time the user comes around and change the, uh, you know, the some other value here like approval date. Here we go and save it. What will happen? The flow will trigger again actually. But what we want is we want to only trigger when this value is getting triggered. So my plan is whenever this is going to get updated, I'm going to put the last updated column also as the same value also. Yeah. So this status is going to get changed. This whatever the value in the update, I'm going to put that to here. So whenever the trigger happens, what I will do is I'm going to check is this status is not equal to this. That's the technique we need to do. That means the status has changed, don't you? Then the flow will run. So for that, uh, we need to use the technique called trigger conditions. So under the settings, so this is under the settings, you know, you can see that I set this, I'll show you what it is. 
so my um, the trigger condition is something like this okay i'll explain it it's got a lot of things going on there so what i did here is uh, first we need to look for not equal to not bracket two bracket so what is not equal to so not equal to my last value that is this value equals last update status yeah comma the current status value which is this triggered value here it is that's that's what that means so that is first we are checking that value the last value is not equal to this that means it's good yeah if it's same it won't then it won't you know trigger it then what we want is we want to we want to capture a you know a particular status so in my case in my scenario i put either approval in progress or um, you know um, approval completed so what i did then is i put an or condition here or two brackets and this is my another condition here these two here these two values i'm comparing it see that that means the trigger status value body slash status slash value is approval in progress or the same status value is approval completed that is that means yeah but now i'm going to combine this into an and statement so that means i need to put an and bracket then comparing with first i'm going to i'm going to check not equal to those two values which is the last updated value with the latest status value comma then or that you know or either one of them equals approval in progress or approval completed that's it and in in front of it we need to put an at sign there that's it uh, you know so that's what this means so let me show you that now so i need to go here and put that click done here we go that's done now now click on the test manually and um, i'm going to run this flow now okay so let's see my flow is going to work or not okay so flow is ready now so going back here first i'm going to create a new order okay so let's let's make it order 200 okay total 8900 and i'm going to i'm going to save it okay so order 200 that's done let me refresh it let's see what happens there order 200 okay N no i haven't allocated any status here yeah it's not assigned there see that it's not assigned so that means what will happen now here is let me go back here see my flow is still running that so because i want to capture when my uh, you know approval in progress or approval complete completed i want to trigger so let me go back here same order i'm going to change the actual status to approval in progress here it is okay then save it so that's done so let me refresh it now so it is not equal to now remember that you know so it is not equal to that so this means the last is not assigned so that means yes i want i want to capture that because ideally approval in progress has been changed that's the status i want to capture so let's go back here here we go here it is see that approval in progress now let me refresh this again you can see the last one here it is see approval in progress and approval in progress again see both both is the same value there yeah oh sorry i think my value has been a slightly uh, slight change i the in the update um that yeah i got i got an issue with the update then there yeah sorry yeah, there is a small issue here i need to uh, map the status value here i forgot so this status value should be my trigger value so my trigger value is expression no here um whatever it is that it is okay that's what i want okay so now uh, we're going to test again now test run it again uh, 
Okay, now going back to my status now, I'm going to change this to order com um, approval completed. Yeah, so let me save it approval completed now. And the other one is approval in progress. So that means, yes, I want to, you know, this change also I want to capture approval completed. Remember my condition I put earlier here? see approval completed i'm going to capture and also approval in progress okay these are the two status i'm interested okay so that means the flow ran successfully now that means both of these values should be the same now here it is see approval completed and approval completed you know so it's same value now so that means if i go back and change the same value um, again means i'm going to i'm going to update some other value yeah Right, I'm going to update some other value here. Okay, I changed my, um, I'm giving some discount. Here we go, 7900 now. So now what will happen now here? See, the flow is not running now. It is still uh, waiting now because even though I want to capture the approval completed, I modified some other field, you know? So this is a technique you can use it. There are other ways you can uh, do this also, but this, you know, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, the other way is you can turn on the history and then do the historical values and do it. It's a bit of a, uh, other, a lot of other steps you need to add it, you know, and also you need to enable version histories and all. There are lots of topics out there in, in online and also uh, Microsoft documentation also out there, which you can have a look, you know. So if you want to particularly, uh, you know, if you want to target one particular field, is that been modified or not this is a technique you can use it you know just replicate with another field and then update the fields using this technique and uh, you know which i described earlier and um, uh, you know then the uh, the the trigger condition that's what you need to do there you know using those uh, this condition you can you are comparing it which is the and not equal to those two values or one of those values is being changed, then capture that. That's what all it all about is. Remember, you need an at sign also in that trigger settings. Okay, um, so I will put this in my video also the um, the expression which I put under the trigger condition. Hope this is useful. Thank you for watching.